Hello, this is Andy from Altered Reality. This video is intended to give a quick walkthrough of what steps are required to integrate Sage into your game from beginning to end. As well, it should give you a good idea of why Sage is incredibly useful to have in any game project. A lot of this tutorial will skim over the details of specific functions. For more information, you can look at the Sage documentation and Sage code reference PDF files. So, let's just go right ahead and jump in and show how to actually use Sage in your game. First, you need to make sure you have a level loaded with an instance of the character you want to animate in it. So I will go ahead and drop the character over here into the scene. And you see, when I play this level, it doesn't actually do anything, he's just standing there. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and create our Sage library. So I do this by right clicking on the folder, going to Create, Sage Library. And I will go ahead and rename this Demo Library. Make sure it's selected in the inspector, and then you can go over here and click Open in Sage Editor. That will go ahead and open the Sage Editor. Let me go ahead and move over here. For this example, all I want my character to be able to do is to have an idle state and a move state. So I will need two variables to do this, speed and direction. So I'll go ahead and click add float. Name this one speed. And I will leave min, max, and default alone as they are exactly what I need for this variable. I will go ahead and enable the limit change option, which will cause the variable to change over time when modified instead of instantly changing. And I'll go ahead and leave the defaults for this as well. Time to add the direction variable. For this, I'll go ahead and set the min and max to negative 180 to positive 180. These will indicate the direction the character is moving in degrees. We'll go ahead and enable limit change as well. And this time I'll also turn on wrap value. This makes the value circular, meaning if the value is negative 170 and the new value is 170, that it will approach the value the fastest way. It would simply approach the min value, then wrap around to the max value. Next, I will go ahead and create our main state machine and I will name it main. I'll leave the rest of the defaults alone. We need to first go ahead and link our character animation prefab to this graph. So do that simply by taking the prefab and dragging and dropping it on the template animation control. And that makes this graph directly linked to that character prefab. I will then go ahead and add the states that this state machine will use, which is just idle and move. I will create idle as a anim list node because it only has one animation that it needs to play. Go ahead and make that point at idle. And I'll go ahead and collapse this node to make more room in the graph. I will then create the move state, which will be a blend graph because we will want it to blend between multiple animations. I will also create two condition nodes which will control the transition between the states. They will both compare against the speed value and will cause a transition when they become true. And that is my simple state machine. Last thing I need to do is configure my blend graph for my move state. I can do that by clicking on the edit button in the blend graph node. First thing I need to do is create a variable node for the direction variable. Then I need to add a blend node because I'm blending between multiple animations because I am blending between four animations, I will need more blend outputs. 
Then we will also adjust the blend ranges so that way it will properly blend between the animations based off of the input variable of direction. This can be done easily by selecting a preset from the preset dropdown. I'll select large overlap with wrap value as the variable that we're inputting is configured to wrap value. I will then create the animation nodes that will point at my four directional walk animations. Three of these animations I can connect directly to the blend output. However, the backwards animation node, I need to connect the two outputs using a max node. This is due to the fact that my input variable was set up to wrap value. And that is all I need to do to create a Sage library. And at this point, we can go ahead and preview our graph very easily by clicking the Start button here. Although first, I need to connect the direction to the input for the blend variable. So if I go ahead and scroll over here and make a little more view in the scene, go ahead and click Start. I'll go ahead and drop our character in the scene and show this debug screen. So now I can go ahead and dynamically adjust the variables so that way we can test our Sage library. Did you see if I look over here? The graph should be updating in real time. So as I adjust the direction variable you'll see the graph actually change its value as well as change what blend is output. So that's the basics of creating a graph and previewing and debugging it. Go ahead and stop that. Next, we need to generate the scripts for the Sage library. While it is possible to interact directly with a Sage controller to interact with your Sage library, it's recommended to use the automatically generated scripts as it makes it much easier to interact with. So we can go ahead and click Generate Scripts. This will bring up the Generate Scripts dialog. This will try to automatically name the scripts that will generate based off of the current library name. There are two scripts this will generate, the Base Controller and the Game Controller. The Base Controller script contains all of the functions necessary to make it easier to interact with your Sage library, including event functions for when the states are entered, updated, and exited. As well, it contains functions and properties to interact with the variables, state machines, and states of your Sage library. The Game Controller script is an initially empty class that derives from the Base Controller. This is where all of your game-specific code should go. For instance, if you want to perform something whenever the idle state is entered, you want to do that in this class. So we go ahead and click the Generate Sage Controller Scripts button. And that will go ahead and add the scripts to the project. So I want to first go ahead and add the Game Controller Script to our game object in the scene. Go ahead and go to Components, Sage, Game, Demo Library, Game Controller, and I will add it and point to the correct asset. And lastly, we want to modify this game script in order to update the input variables as we need. Go ahead and double click to edit this. And that will go ahead and bring up my script right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy in some helper functions that I've already written previously for displaying stuff to the screen and for getting the direction from an axis. Go ahead and hide these. 
So what I need to do for our class is to override the base implementation of the update function, although I still didn't make sure the base gets called. So I will get the axes of the controller input. And because we derived from the base controller, this actually has properties which will directly set the variables in your Sage library itself. So I can set the direction to the direction based off of the axes, which will set the variable into the Sage library. And I can set the speed property to the magnitude of the axes. And that's all the coding we need to do to interact with our Sage library. Simple as that. So I'll go ahead and jump back to the game here. and Go ahead and launch it so that way we can take a look and see how it runs. As you see when I move the stick, I move my character on different directions. And I let go of it and he goes back to idle. And that is how quick it is to use Sage to create and control your character's animations, both visually and easily. That concludes the game implementation walkthrough. For more information, please check our website. Thank you for using Sage. I truly hope you enjoy it. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions at all.